Good morning, boys and girls. It is really great to see you again this morning. I hope you've had a great week and school is going well and you're enjoying this spring weather that we're having. And I see that it's supposed to be warming up and that will be a wonderful thing. Well, last week we finished up almost two months of talking about Jesus and his last week on earth for his crucifixion. And after that crucifixion, when he was buried in the tomb, And he rose again. He spent 40 days traveling around with the disciples, visiting with them, talking with them, fellowshipping with them, and making sure they understood exactly what was going on. And and at the end of those 40 days, he ascended into heaven. But before he did that, he had promised the disciples that the Holy Spirit would be brought to them, would be given to them by the Father, by God. And that Holy Spirit would be their friend, their guide. That Holy Spirit is still with each and every one of us today when we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He is our guide. He is our kind of voice when you know something isn't right. And that voice inside you that tells you something is wrong, you're doing something wrong, you should stop doing it. Or that voice that tells you you need to be doing something to help somebody that you see. So that's that Holy Spirit working in each and every one of us when we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we finished up with that study. And today we are going back into talking about, we're going back into the Old Testament, talking about each individual that we come across in the Bible. I want you to have a small synopsis of everybody. And hopefully we're going to continue to do this all the way through the Bible to the point where then you will know. We talk about somebody in the Bible, you will know who they are, what they are, what they were about. And so today, well, last, uh, gosh, it was in February, February 7th, we ended with 2 Kings verse, um, verse 5. And today we're starting with 2 Kings 6. As we start with 2 Kings 6, we were looking at Elijah. Remember, Elisha had studied under Elijah And Elijah was taken away into that fiery chariot, taken into the sky. Um, He never died. God just took him to heaven. He was one of God's great followers. And he was a prophet. Remember, these are prophets we're talking about. Prophets are people who hear from God. They understand what God is saying so they can come to you, me, and other people. And they did this back in biblical times, too, and tell them what God wanted to happen or didn't want to happen. Or what was he was saying was going to happen no matter what they did. So let's, um, we're going to talk about the Elisha, again, Elisha, and he is staying with a bunch of other, what they call sons of the prophets. And these are more people who are learning to be prophets themselves. And they want to meet down by the Jordan River. And they, they talk to Elisha about it. They said, we need a bigger place to stay. Let's go down there and we'll build a place. We'll build a place. So they asked Elisha if he would go with them, and he did. And as they began cutting down some trees to build their home, one of the axe heads flew off of the axe handle and it went into the river. Well, you know, those. have you ever picked up an axe? Axe heads are very, very heavy, and this thing sank straight to the bottom. The man who was using the axe cried out to Elisha because it was a borrowed axe. He had borrowed it from somebody else and he knew he had to return it the way he had gotten it. So Elisha takes a stick and he throws it into the water. And where the stick lands in the water, then the axe head floats up. Well, (laughs) it doesn't seem like it'd be, it's a short story, very short. That was the whole thing. They wanted to build a bigger house. They went down to build a house. They lost the axe head. Elisha made it float in the water. That's the entire thing. And this is 2 Kings, verse 6, 1 through 7. Now, these accounts of Elisha are true. These are true things that happen. But they are also there to teach us a lesson. And we're going to figure out what it is that we need to learn from this part of 2 Kings 6. So let's see what God wants us to hear from this floating axe head. While God has varied the way he works with 
with uh, humans throughout history, meaning he has changed how he works with different people. It is certain that the spiritual principles, the principles of God himself, never changes. It never changes. God does not make mistakes. God doesn't change what he's doing because there are no mistakes. And these are eternal ways that God uses to speak. And they show God's character and his care for every man and woman, child, male or female, and their needs. And they, they sh let's get this spelled out exactly right. What that means, God will continue to provide for man and what we need. But we need to be right in everything that we do. Now, this group of prophets were growing in numbers. They were growing in numbers. The house they had was too small. Now, we had been studying about the prophets back in January, February, December, I think even in November. And they were being persecuted and they were being executed. And under the heart, the leadership of Elijah, things were changing. They're getting more and more people, more and more prophets to come to study God's word, and even just regular people who wanted to study and know God's word. More and more were coming, so, so much so that they needed a larger home. These men were faithful followers of God, and they were devoted to the spreading of God's word. This is in total contrast, totally different from the way the world was back then. The world was interested in materialism, in the things that they could get, the things that they could do, the things that they could make that would make them bigger people. Well, they had, there was unfaithfulness. They were not faithful to God. They were following Baal. They were following the false prophets and they were full of hypocrisy. Does that sound familiar? Does it sound like what's going on today? People are out for what's good for them, what makes them feel good and not worried about what God has done for us. Well, some things never change. Remember that the prophets had been living in caves to keep from being caught, to keep from being executed. And now here they are. They were in a small house, and now they're building a bigger house. Elijah and this school of prophets' sole purpose was to carry out the message of God through their ministry and the miracles that God allowed them to perform. Well, through the miracle, though the miracles showed God's love for his people, the primary purpose was to demonstrate the futility of false gods and any way of life that departed from God. Simply speaking, God is the only way. Following false gods makes takes us away from what God wants us to be. These were men that were hungry for the Lord and they wanted to be used by him. Where Wherever Elisha went, wherever he resided, as many of them who could get around him, be around him, they flocked to him. They wanted instruction and counsel. They wanted to be taught what God wanted. They would covet every second they had with him. I know we've talked about the Ten Commandments. We don't covet. But when it comes to God's word, to covet means to want everything Elijah has, everything Elijah knows. So they were coveting every second that they had with him. When God places someone in our lives, like our pastor, Sunday school teachers, children's church teachers, when they come in to talk to you, to teach you, he wants us to be with them, to learn his word. I covet the time that I get to sit in church and hear the scriptural word from our pastor. I want to hear it. I want to know it. And that's what God wants every one of us to be, to be hungry for the word. Well, God is not worried about our buildings. He's not worried about our finances of the church. What he wants is the truth of the word to be spoken. And he wants to see biblical change take place in the character of his people. And that is how God measures the greatness of his people. Not huge numbers, not because we have 3,000 people coming in the door, not because the, 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 the plates are overflowing with money, but what the people are like, how they treat other people, how they treat the, the smallest of people, the, the 
how they how honest they are with each other and and how they know the Bible and how they know Jesus Christ. That is what God is interested in. Now that axe head is just a picture of honesty. The axe was borrowed. They didn't want to lose it. They wanted to be able to return it to the man that they had borrowed it from. God knew the hearts of those who were involved in what was happening with it. God hears our cries. God hears everything. He hears our cries, our laughter, our needs, our desires. He hears them all. God did something impossible. He made that heavy axe head float to the top of the water, something that is not going to happen without God being part of it. He Something as simple as that. He knew that this man needed that so he could return this back. He wants nothing. There is nothing, nothing too small in your life or mine that God would help us with. But he wants you to have complete trust in him. He, he will take care of all your needs if you have complete trust in him. You have to trust him in everything. Do you pray? Do you talk to God? Do you listen to God? Where is your trust in God? Do you have trust? Do you trust your mom and your dad? Trust the policemen around us? We need to trust in God that he's going to continue to provide for us. Are you one of his children? Do you believe in his son, Jesus Christ? Do you talk to God through Jesus Christ? That's what he needs you to be. Boys and girls, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that you never, ever leave us. Lord, we are so thankful that you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, that he, as after his crucifixion, he rose from the dead. And Lord, we know that he is there for us and the Holy Spirit is also there for us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I miss you and I love you and I hope you have a wonderful day.